want to talk to you about servitude. Having an attitude of service. And more specifically tonight, what it means and looks like to take care of the poor. And so if you have a copy of God's Word, would you turn with me, Deuteronomy chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 15 is what we're going to be looking at tonight. If you don't have a copy, if you don't have your smartphone, it will be up on the screen for us tonight. And as you turn there, I want to ask you this question tonight. And it's just simply this. What do you think about when you think of serving the poor. What do you think about when you think of serving the poor? What do you see? What comes to mind? What's, what's the feeling that comes over you? Do you have a sense of sadness or grief for those that are in destitute situations? Do you feel maybe motivated to action, to to help be and make the difference. Do you care? Maybe when you think about the poor, you have a sense of apathy. Maybe you just don't feel anything at all. Maybe you think of a certain image or perception of those that are poor. Maybe your, 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 your mind and snapshots goes to, to someone that's, that's in a soup kitchen receiving a meal that might be the only meal that they'll get. Maybe you'll think of someone that's in a homeless shelter that has nowhere else to stay. Maybe in that moment that's there, you think about the panhandler that's on the street corner begging for money, the, the beggar that's there trying to get a buck out of somebody that's driving by. Maybe tonight you think of the family that's living in the projects in Pontiac or Detroit. Maybe you think of, of someone that's addicted to drugs or alcohol and, and the fact that that, that that circumstance has probably derailed their life. Would you be shocked tonight? If I told you that there are more representations of the poor among you than you would ever truly realize. The poor could be a neighbor or a friend. It could tonight be someone in this room. Tonight it could even be someone that's on this stage. We're going to talk tonight about this thought of serving the poor. We're going to unpack it together. And my prayer tonight is that you will allow God's Holy Spirit to motivate you toward action and compassion for the poor. I want to turn your attention now to Deuteronomy chapter 15. Can I do that? Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verses 7 through 8 simply says this. If anyone is poor among you, fellow Israelites, in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Rather be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. That's what the Scripture is challenging us in. And we'll skip down to verse 11 that simply says this. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. This passage tonight that we're reading from in Deuteronomy chapter 15 is set square in the middle of a set of laws given to the Israelites on how they should handle the poor. And it's in these days that, that there were literally laws set up in place to prevent people from living in extreme poverty. If someone had a debt that they couldn't pay or, or if, they, if they would pay it, it would end them up in poverty, that debt would be forgiven. Additionally, it was up to the Israelites to police themselves 
amongst their neighbors to ensure that no one would fall into poverty. It was this thought that I am my brother's keeper. I am responsible in part to what happens to those around me. And this principle is exemplified all throughout Scripture. In fact, it is a commandment given to us to take care of the poor. Did you see it there in verse 11? It said, therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites. And with that commandment that's there, there are blessings for those who follow it and consequences For those who don't. The scripture challenges us over and over and over again. In this thought, Proverbs 28, 27 says, Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. 1 John 3, verses 17 through 18 says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Hebrews 13 and 16 says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And I love this Philippians 2.4 that says, this, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Scripture is clear tonight. God has called us to take care of the poor. It's there in Deuteronomy 15 that it goes on to indicate that there will always be poor among us. It says in Deuteronomy 15, 11, there will always be poor people in the land. And I'll be honest with you tonight, this statement just baffles me. It puzzles me. I, I don't understand. I can't fathom it. How is it possible that, that an all-powerful, all-knowing God would still allow there to be poor among us? How is it that in a world full of wealth that there would still be poor among us? And I'll shoot straight with you tonight. I don't have the answer to these questions. I believe that's one of those secret things that belongs to our God and his infinite wisdom. But perhaps tonight God wants us to take the opportunity to learn from those that are poor. You say, how can I learn from someone who's poor? They don't have anything. I tell you, you can learn a lot from someone who's poor. There's a posture that the poor have, a a posture of humility. And maybe that's a spiritual posture that God wants each and every one of us in here tonight to have. I love what Corey Ten Boom said. It's just simply this. You can never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. And when Jesus is literally all you have to hang on to, it's then that your perspective changes. I love what Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3 says. It's just simply this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice there that Jesus doesn't say, blessed are the boastful in spirit, or blessed are the rich in spirit, or blessed are those that think they have everything going on. I know I don't. But blessed are the poor in spirit. Those that would realize that I am nothing without God. And I need him more than worldly possessions. And so tonight, let me give you our big idea. Let me give you the the, the central theme and thought of this talk tonight. We can wrap up, we can really wrap it up right here. And this simple thought is just simply this. God wants us to take care of the poor, a.k.a. your neighbor. God wants us to take care of the poor among us, 
and the poor among us really are our neighbors. So let me walk you through this tonight. Can I do that? Let me talk to you about how we care for the poor among us. Number one is this. God wants us to care for the critically poor. James 1.27 says this religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. God's saying there that, that real uh, religion, that, that right living is, is not just showing up and coming to church. That's not it. But he's saying that what religion is all about, the, the kind of faith that God accepts, is when we say, you know what, I'm willing to go outside of these four walls and to care for those that are needy, to care for those that are in distress. And watch this, not only to do that, but to keep ourselves pure and clean in the midst of a fallen world. I'll tell you tonight, after working intimately in the city of Pontiac for many years and being aware of so many organizations that are making a difference and so many people, quite frankly, on the ground that are in need, I'll tell you tonight, I'll tell you right now tonight, I can guarantee you that there are people that are trying to figure out what am I going to do tonight. It's freezing cold outside. I don't know where my next meal is going to come from. I'm in the middle of COVID-19. I've lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. Where do I turn? They're critically poor. Listen, tonight you might be a college student. You're thinking, I'm poor. Like, I don't have anything. I don't have any money. I remember I've been there, done that. I'm not talking about that kind of poor. I'm talking about critical, structural, generational Poor. And tonight, God is calling us to take responsibility and to care for those that are critically poor among us. But that doesn't mean that we have all the answers. Listen to me close. That doesn't mean that, that you and I were the saviors. That doesn't mean we get to go in and just say, we're going to fix this. And we're going to go in and, and we can solve all the problems. And we have all the answers. And we have all the resources because the reality is we don't. And our responsibility isn't to go in and run down and say, I'm going to hand out a bunch of stuff and that will solve the problem. That's not it. Our responsibility is to be aware and is to be conscious and is to learn and is to pray and is to receive and is to say, God, what would you have me do? It's to say that I want to provide a help up, a hand up to those that are in need. Next week, we're gonna do that right here at Collective. And as we come together, we're gonna start right here in the auditorium and we're gonna get some instructions and we're gonna get some empowerment. And right there in the lobby, we're gonna pack together care packages for victims and human trafficking. And this is a ministry that we normally do every year around Valentine's Day. And because of COVID, uh, some things changed. And when I heard that, I said, we got to go do that. We, we, we got to help those that, 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 that are, are, are in the most vulnerable situations of need. And some are homeless and some are in shelters and some are on the streets. But we're going to go as a group and make a difference. So I want to encourage you to be here. I want to encourage you to come back. We're going to pray over those packages. We're going to write notes and put them in those packages and just do our part to make a difference. And then we're going to hand those off to partners on the ground that are ministering to these people on a day in and day out basis. We're going to do that together. God wants us to care for the critically core. Listen to me close. But God also wants us to care for those who need justice. For Samuel chapter 2, verses 7 through 8 say this, The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust 
and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. And many of you know uh, uh, tonight, maybe you don't know that, that we as a church have made a concerted effort to reach out and make a difference to folks living in the city of Pontiac. And can I tell you tonight, there's so many that are living in that city and need justice rendered to them. So many that would say uh, that, that they've been marginalized and overlooked and forgotten and left behind and rendered useless in so many ways. That's why we have a dream center there that would make a difference in the lives of those in the city. But I I was looking at this passage and it just says that he raises the poor from the dust. I know what that means. I was sitting here during worship and just singing the song Waymaker and I just a flood of emotion came over me as I thought about what God did in my own life, in my own situation, in my own family that's there. And I was just thinking about how powerfully God saved and rescued my life. And the older I get, the more I realize and the more I begin to fathom and grapple with the, the, the place that God rescued me from because I was a seven-year-old kid living in the inner city of Pontiac. I had an absent father. My mom and brother and I were living with my grandmother on the east side of Pontiac. And uh, my brother was involved in drug life and gang culture. Was shot and almost killed when I was 13. There were drugs and alcohol present in our home. And, and literally, like if you had kids, this is not where you would want your kids to live. And I can just remember vividly being in that place, being in there as a, a seven-year-old child. And God sent someone to rescue me. I can literally remember being there in a ministry that was reaching children in the inner city of Pontiac, reached out to me and shared the gospel message to me for the very first time in my life. And at seven years old, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. And there I was, poor, needy, without God. And I had every opportunity to be another statistic and every opportunity to, to be far away from God. But God decided to send someone to rescue me to save me and redeem my life. It was like those three Hebrew boys that Scripture talks about that were subjected to, to, to a fire for, for their actions to really serve God. And it was like God had me in the midst of a, a literal hell. And in an instant, he pulled me out of that, preserved my life for his honor, his glory, his fame. Listen, I've never had a cigarette. I've never done drugs. I've never had a sip of alcohol. I've never been arrested. I've only been with one woman, and that's my wife. And I'll tell you, there's so many that isn't their same journey. That isn't their same posture. And I'll tell you, they're just waiting for someone like I was waiting for someone that will say, I'll stand up for you. I'll fight for you. You don't have what you need. You've been forgotten and marginalized. I'll make the difference. And collective tonight, God is calling us to be that difference. Listen, God wants us to care for the critically poor. He wants us to care for those who need justice. And finally tonight, he wants us to care for our neighbor. Proverbs 14, 20 and 21 says this, the poor 
are shunned even by their neighbors, but the rich have many friends. It is a sin to despise one's neighbor, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. And the question I have for you tonight, collective, is simply this, who is your neighbor? Who has God put around you and placed in your stratosphere of life that is in need? who would be poor and that needs someone that knows God and has received the gospel and has the resources and has the tools to say, you know what? You're my neighbor. I'll care for you. I'll serve you. I'll help rescue you. I love what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it read this quote as we celebrated and honored his legacy this week. It just simply says this, when we look at modern man, we have to face the fact that modern man suffers from a kind of poverty of the spirit, which stands in glaring contrast to his scientific and technological abundance. We've learned to fly the air like birds. We've learned to swim the seas like fish. And yet we haven't learned to walk the earth as brothers and sisters. Tonight, collective God is calling us to care for the poor, to care for those that require justice, to care for our neighbors. Would you bow your head with me tonight? And for just a moment, we're going to pray. And I was reminded this week of a story of Robert Arthington, who was a man that felt a strong desire to help the poor. Robert Arthington was a, a graduate of Cambridge University. He was a man of many talents, a man who, have, who, who could have had an incredible life. But he said, you know what? I'm going to have a, a box for my table and a crate for my chair and a mat for my bed. And I'm going to live in a one-bedroom flat all the days of my life. Do you know that Robert Arthington gave over $5 million to missions during the course of his life because he made such a bold act? And when he died, they found his journal and written in it, he simply said, I'd rather have a pot for my table and a crate for my chair and a map for my bed that one person would die because they're in need and because they don't know Christ. Tonight, God wants us to be a part of the same difference. God, tonight, I thank you for every single person in this room. I thank you tonight that you're calling us not just to be about ourselves, but to be selfless. And God, you have empowered us. You have equipped us. You've brought us into this place, not just for ourselves, but for the world that's out there. The world that is so desperately in need. And God, there's nobody else on the face of the earth that cares for the souls of men but us. And so Jesus, as we stand in this place and as we worship and as we reflect, God, would we be motivated to action, to make a difference, to reach the poor. Not only that, God, I pray that this group would have my face in mind. Because there's other people like me, like I was, that are in need tonight, waiting for someone to rescue them.